the saint of this day, Antony Maria Zakaria, was an example of the time. It was a time of renewal, a time of grace. The Church, looking back over this period, sees it as the Catholic Reformation, and many things were born at the time. His dates are 1502 to 1539, so he didn't live all that long. He died in his thirties. I believe that the reason why the order he founded is referred to as the Barnabite order is because they were given the Church of St. Barnabas. His foundation was actually Pauline. He took the Apostle Paul as his model and the model for his brethren. He himself was born at Cremona. He initially went into the medical field. He studied medicine at Padua and practiced in his hometown as a doctor, but he went towards the sacred priesthood and was ordained in 1528. So, in practice, he will only have 11 years of priesthood before he is called to his eternal reward. He saw that he was called to exercise compassion by spiritual as well as physical healing. And in 1530, two years therefore after his ordination, he founded an order of priests bound by vows to regenerate and revive the love of divine worship and a properly Christian way of life by frequent preaching and faithful ministry of the sacraments. Now we see how to have men living together as priests and consecrated is a way of enhancing the worship of God. Care can be given to the sacred liturgy. And by the way, good liturgy is the best evangelizer because God is given space to do the work himself. This was picked up also by other great founders of the time, the likes of St. Philip Neri. We need to experience God. The emotions are usable and sanctifiable by the Holy Ghost because they open up the will and then he can act directly on the will himself. We need beauty. We need otherness and not to come into church and have more of the same thing. The teaching of St Paul and emphasis on the Eucharist were two characteristic devotions. He worked at Milan and Vicenza but he died prematurely at Cremona. So his order, like those founded by Camillus of Lelis, Joseph Calazans and Jerome Emilian, are examples of the revival of Christian life in Italy in times of notorious abuses. He was canonized in 1897. His feast in the old and the new calendar is this day, the 5th of July. When giving a retreat some years ago in a monastery in Holland to other priests, I used some of the spirituality of this great reformer and it was a lesson to us all priests. The number of sermons that he preached in his short life was something colossal and the influence he had was something else. 
and one sees in him precisely the power of the word. He didn't mince words and therefore he had authority and dignity and a preacher need not mince words for fear of upsetting. Otherwise they have precisely more of the same thing. If people aren't comfortable about what they're hearing, they ought perhaps to ask themselves, is there anything they might perhaps be told through this word? If people listening have more to say to the priest, then it means that they are placing themselves indirectly and consciously over God because they can't see further than the man and they can't see that actually in the course of liturgical preaching there is more going on than the human. God uses the unworthy preacher. There is grace in the air if he is preaching by commission of his bishop. The same grace is not there in the layperson in the pew. And the layperson in the pew should, as he reads sacred scripture, come with a spirit of emptiness and pleading to the Holy Ghost for a word. For there will be a word there somewhere. But if he wants only what he wants to hear, he'll not hear it. And he'll go away as he came in, not growing. It happens. With regard to this question of preaching, the devil has been obliged to make certain things known in exorcism. It would seem that the demolishing of nearly all the pulpits of the West is something that he pushed and wanted. Why? Physically, to be in a place of authority adds authority. And old Nick knows it full well. Place a preacher in a spot where everything happens, including the notices of the parish, and where anyone can go and do anything, he has no authority, physically. Old Nick hates preaching, and now he's got very powerful ways of making, making sure it doesn't happen. We have been told how long we may hold a celebration for. We have been told by many how long we are allowed to go on for. Now, this may seem practical, but it has consequences. Because people proportionately are exposed to many hours of other preaching. The pulpit of Satan is in their home, and they are exposed to it for many hours. Given, therefore, by a process of osmosis, another mentality, another mindset, another set of truths. Now, is five minutes a week going to be enough to re-establish the balance? Moreover, can one develop a theme and nourish a soul in five minutes? To develop a topic, one needs at least a minimum of time. Now, there is that old saying, which I've used before, and which is very true in this context. He did it, to whom it profits, is fated qui protest. Hayton, hate, Satan hates preaching. I would just conclude. We are in a time also of demolition and possible renewal. It is hoped that the thirst for the sacraments at this time 
will help the church, the faithful of the church. Will it? Or will we have again, once things are, if they are ever, restored to normality, more of the same thing? People being choosy. A soul that is really grateful for the bread of life and access to what our fathers suffered for will be grateful and will not easily complain. It's rather like the child who's given a portion of a cake. I saw a picture one time of this cake. There were two at the receiving end. One was beaming for joy for the small portion that he'd had. What a feast. The other was grumping and groaning because he saw the three quarters that he hadn't had. Will we be like that? Will we? Questa festa ci colloca nella contrariforma, la riforma cattolica. È l'epoca in cui tante congregazioni nuove nascono, sacerdoti che vivono insieme. Sant'Antonio Maria Zaccaria, nella sua vita breve, ha attirato tanti giovani sacerdoti e ha insistito sulla vita apostolica data come modello da San Paolo Apostolo la predicazione, anche la vita liturgica curata, la cura delle anime. È un momento in cui la reazione si fa all'interno della Chiesa, e contro anche la cosiddetta riforma protestante, che purtroppo demonisce e frange. Lo Spirito Santo voleva all'interno del corpo mistico creare movimenti di riforma. Anche nei nostri tempi ci sono movimenti di riforma e di rinnovamento. Lo Spirito è sempre nuovo. Studiando la vita di questo santo, dando un ritiro in Olanda, ho visto la ricchezza della sua vita, nella sua breve vita, Predicava tanto, ma migliaia di omelie, di sermoni grandi e influenza enorme sulle anime. Il demonio anche lo sa. E si vede che lui ha avuto una vittoria enorme in questi ultimi anni dal concilio. Lui ha spinto la distruzione dei pulpiti fisici e si è sentito in esorcismo come questa è stata una vittoria per lui perché l'autorità del predicatore è molto ridotta quando non ha più l'autorità fisica essere elevato fisicamente al di sopra delle teste di dare l'omenia in nome di Dio è tutta altra cosa questi santi sapevano maneggiare la potenza della parola è una cosa da recuperare
Sun.